And now, the Mutual Broadcasting System is proud to present Phillips H. Lord's Counter Spy. When are we going to start emptying out that thing? I figure we wait one more month. I'm glad we're through. Why? To tell you the truth, I was getting kind of shaky at the end. I'm glad we're getting out while we're still ahead. That's just the idea. Always quit while you're ahead. That way you can't lose. What happens if she finds out? That's the one thing I'm worried about. Well... For her own sake, she better not. In just a moment, Counter Spy, a program especially transcribed to help investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. They're here, L and M filters, newest, best, purest of filter tip cigarettes. L and M filters, just what the doctor ordered. L and M filters give you effective filtration from a strictly non-mineral filter material, alpha cellulose. Exclusive to L&M filters and entirely pure and harmless to health. Just what the doctor ordered. The L&M filter gives you a light and mild smoke because the heavy particles are filtered out. Just what the doctor ordered. L&M filters give you much less nicotine. The L&M filter removes one-third of the smoke, leaves you all the satisfaction, much more flavor and aroma. These facts from the statement of Dr. F.R. Darkus. Director of Research for Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company. At last, a filter tip cigarette with plenty of good taste. Buy new L&M filters in the striking red and white pack. This Christmas, give the newest, give the best L&M filters. This is David Harding. Here is the latest official tabulation on crime in this country. Each day, an average of 5,286 major crimes are committed. Among them, 1,144 burglaries, 147 robberies, and 3,141 larcenies. Now, what does this represent in cost to you, the public? Over $400 million worth of property stolen. The middle of last month, right outside of New York City... In the bedroom of a home in a small suburban project, a handsome, well-built man bent his body back and forth on the portable rowing machine, unaware of his wife standing behind him. One, two, one, two, one. Arthur. Two, one, two, one. Arthur. Two. Can't you one, stop for a minute? Two, when the alarm rings. Oh. Two, one. Now will you listen to me? Hand me the towel. Arthur, please. Okay, I'll get it myself. Arthur, I've got to talk to you. It's about... I know what it's about. Money. And there's nothing I can do about it yet. You know what I make? I give you all I can. Arthur, I try not to complain, but... I don't know, I just can't make a go of things this way. We owe everybody, and... Keeps getting worse all the time. Now, look, Sue, we've been over this a thousand times. It's not my fault. I do the best I can. But you can do so much better. You still act like, like a little boy. You've got to grow up someday. I want you to be a man. Now, look, there's nothing wrong with me. I've got a great possibility. Of course you have, darling, but you're not using it. In the meantime, something terrible is happening to us. So you don't have any new dresses. It isn't just that, Arthur. Believe You me. want me to believe you, and yet you don't want to believe in me. When Dan Hadley and I finish our invention, you'll have everything you want, yeah, So That invention. Another of your little boy's secrets. You'll know what it is when it's completed. I don't care anymore what it is. All I know is that you keep that, that closet in the basement workroom locked from me. Like you keep so much of yourself locked from me. That's what makes it so terrible. You, you shut half your life from me, and all I want to do is help you. You can help by just waiting. How much longer do you think I can wait? Arthur, you know what I wanted to do while you were out of the house this afternoon? What? 
I wanted to take an axe and tear down that closet door in the basement. Oh? And then I wanted to destroy, just chop to bits whatever it is you have in that Don't closet. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you ever dare go near that closet. You're hurting Don't me. Don't you ever dare have a thought like that again, do you understand? Please, let me do go. Do you understand me? All right. All right, Arthur, but let me go. Please, let go. I'm sorry, Sue. Sue, wait. Someday you'll understand. What's in that closet is going to make us rich. Then you won't have to worry about bills anymore. And then you'll have all the clothes you want. All right, Arthur. That's Dan Hadley. I'll get it. Hi, Aunt. Come on in, Dan. Hello, Sue. Dan? Sue's uh, on her way to the movies, Dan. We'll see you later, honey. Enjoy yourself, Sue. What's the matter with her? Complaining about money again. Look, why don't you break down and give her some extra cash? You crazy? She'd want an explanation. Brother, you're going to have an awful lot of explaining to do when we cash in on that basement closet of yours. You mean when we finally sell our uh, invention? That's right, Art. When we put all that ice back on the market. Well, we still have three more jobs to pull before we convert any of that jewelry into cash. Remember that. I remember, Art. That's the agreement. Just three more and we're set for life. Headquarters, Washington. To all counter-spy field offices. Special order over Mr. Harding's signature. All important data concerning jewel thefts will be forwarded immediately to Statistical Department for Processing. This is A-1 priority. End, end, end. Uh. Sue? Arthur, I just... What are you to... doing down here? Didn't I tell you never to come down when I'm working here without knocking first? I... I forgot, Arthur. Sneaking down to the basement to see what I'm doing, huh? Trying to find out what's in the class. No. I just forgot to knock, that's all. I only wanted to tell you that Dan Hadley's upstairs. Oh. Well, you should have knocked first. Don't forget again. I won't. Come on. Got here a little early, Aunt. It's okay, Dan. We can get more work in. I'm ready to go. You can run along now, Sue. All right. Bonnie. Yes? Sorry I blew my top that way. Just on edge now that Dan and I are in the home stretch with our, our invention. I wish you could understand. Try, huh? I'll try. That's my girl. I'll see you later. What was that about, Aunt? I thought she was snooping to see what was in the closet. I made a mistake. Here, ready for my trial run? Anytime you are. All right, help me with this sofa. All right, where do you want it? Just a couple of more feet uh, to the left. No, right, this'll do. That's all. Right. Yeah. What's next? Move that uh, armchair back uh, against the wall. Here. Okay. This all right? About a foot nearer the door. Yeah? Yeah, fine. Uh, what about this coffee table? Stays right where it is. This is the exact layout of that living room, Art? Exact. Only a smaller scale. i got to hand it to you. One visit to the Dowling apartment and you remember the whole layout. Dowling apartment was a cinch. The other two were tougher. But not too tough for my boy. We haven't got time for flattery, pal. Switch off the lights. I'll run through it right from the beginning. return to Counter Spy in just a moment. Better get out of bed, dear. You'll be late for the office. Breakfast's on the table. Oh, I'm in no condition this morning. Ate too much with the boys last night. You know, every good wife should know about Eno for just such emergencies as this. It's truly amazing what gentle Eno may do for you when you overeat or eat food that doesn't agree with you. 
Yes, just a dash of good-tasting Eno and a glass of water before retiring, and repeat it in the morning if necessary. That's all you need. You can say goodbye to acid indigestion, upset stomach, heartburn, and other symptoms of over-acidity. Remember, Eno's buffering antacid action gives you real relief over a long period of time. Helps you feel like your old self again. Why not get sparkling, good-tasting Eno today? Eno, Eno, when you're feeling low, Eno, it's mild and gentle and good, good-tasting Eno. Dan, this is Art. All set to roll on the Dowling job tonight. Time the same as you said it? Same. Ten on the nose. You pick me up at the corner of 49th and Elm. Ten on the nose. I'll be there. Now remember, Dan, keep driving around the block. Okay, but this ain't gonna be as easy as a Dowling job. Look at the size of that wall you gotta climb. Will you stop worrying? What do you think I've been doing those physical exercises for? My health? Let's go, Dan. Where did it go, Art? Sweet as can. You get everything? You don't think I'd mess up our last job, do you? You bet I got everything. Harding. Peters, Mr. Harding. Braden just checked in from Bay City. Oh, be right out, Peters. How are you, Mr. Harding? Well, a little the worse for wear, Braden. Well, I can give Braden the rundown in the lab if you want to take a break. Oh, thanks. I'm okay, Peters. Let's go. Peters, uh, fill you in on any of it, Braden? Only that I'm to be central control agent reporting directly to you, sir. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, first, Braden, I want you to see the chart of New York over on the wall there. Uh Uh-huh. Well, it's quite an elaborate setup to devote to jewel thieves. Believe me, Braden, these are the most elaborate jewel thieves we've come across. And the most successful. Now, they've operated exclusively in the part of town marked off on the chart here. Mm -hmm. This is the area in which we've established our permanent security net. It covers only these six city blocks. But we're throwing everything into those six blocks. Well, sort of narrows it down, Chief, doesn't it? We're taking our cue from the thieves themselves. They've been successful in mining this area. There's no reason to believe they won't continue to work the same vein. Well, I don't want to tell you how to run things, but... uh... Go ahead, Braden. Well, you're not usually one to put all your eggs in one basket, Mr. Harding. And I have this time. Is that what you mean? Yes, sir. This time, Braden, it's the only basket we have. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Me and my big mouth. (laughs) Now, these numbers indicate doormen, elevator operators, and other spotters. Especially detailed agents? That's right. Well, by the amount of numbers there, I'd say the area's pretty well covered. I only wish I had a hundred more agents to blanket it. Well, so much for coverage. Now... The operations and characteristics of the thieves, or thief. You mean this is all the work of one man? It's possible that the actual stealing is done by one person, a very agile, clever, and well-trained man. All the robberies have one factor in common. The premises were broken into through a window or French door. Peters, bring that exhibit over here, will you? Right away. Take a good look at this, Braden. Mm-hmm. The thief's means of entry. Right? Mm-hmm. In each robbery, a circular piece of glass, such as this one, was cut out just below the latch. Then the thief reached through and unlocked the window, or French door. Which isn't particularly new or clever. You said this man was clever, Chief. I still say he is. Notice these pieces of cellophane tape stuck to the glass. Yes, yeah, so... So the tape keeps the glass from falling after it's cut, practically invisible. After the thief was through cutting, he had only to lift the cut piece out, noiselessly. So, Braden? So I was wrong. 
Clever's right. Tape cut glass. Well, it certainly doesn't spell out anybody's name to me, Mr. Hardy. Nor to me either, Braden. But it's all we have so far to identify the people involved. May turn out to be enough. We'll find out starting tonight. <laughs> It's getting late, Art. Sue might come in at any minute. Don't worry. She won't be back before 11.30. We'll be out of the basement by then. Uh, well, this one's done. Let's have next. Uh, here. This ring's the last. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, it'd be tricky getting that diamond from the setting. I cut the band first, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This band goes with the other settings. Be careful, that stone. It's a butte, you know. Mm-hmm. Haven't chipped one yet, have I? There you are. Got a scratch on it. Put it on the scale. Six carats. Mm, stone number 872. Cut diamond. Weight, six carats. Uh, then that does it. We're finished. 872 stones. Well, even at 25% of their market value, they're worth over a quarter of a million. Easy. You'll have the rest of those jewel settings melted down by tomorrow night, huh? Yeah, sure thing. Same way in bars, right? Yeah, of course. Nobody's going to identify a bar of platinum as once having been the setting for their diamond tiara. Yeah, for that matter, no one's going to be able to pick out unmounted stones and say for sure there is. All right, help me uh, put this stuff away. Art, hmm? when are we going to start emptying out this closet? I figure we wait one more month. I'm glad we're through. Huh? Well, I'll tell you the truth, I was getting kind of shaky at the end. I'm glad we're getting out while we're still ahead of the game. That's the idea, Dan. Always quit while you're ahead. That way you can't lose. All right, thanks. Nothing positive yet, Braden. Well, we've certainly lost a lot of time, Mr. Harding. Ten days at it, no results at all from our security net. No robberies either. Well, that could be a good sign. You really think so, Chief? Really? No, they're probably just laying low, and in the meantime, we're tying up our facilities and men. If there was only some way to make them move. Well, Peters and I have been working toward that end. Yes? I have Mrs. Rogers with me, Chief. All right, Peters, please come in with her, will you? Thank you for coming, Mrs. Rogers. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Harding. Peters, a chair for Mrs. Rogers, please. Mrs. Rogers? Thank you. Mr. Peters explained the situation to you. Yes, indeed. And I'm very flattered to have an opportunity to cooperate with the counter-spies... I was only saying to my husband the other day, everybody complains about law enforcement, and so few are willing to help it. Then you understand the importance of this particular job. I certainly do. Our apartment has been robbed so many times that my husband suggests, jokingly, of course, that we install turnstiles at the windows (laughs) to make some money from the heavy traffic. Well, that's the main reason we called on you, Mrs. Rogers. You're well known as a target for jewel thieves. And you live smack in the center of the theft area, as I explained before. And you want me to be robbed again. I want you to help in every way possible to make robbing your apartment a very attractive matter. All right, Mr. Harding. I'm very willing to help in every way possible. Look, Art, will you cut that rowing machine just for a minute so I can talk to Um, you? I can hear you, Dan. Besides, i got to keep in condition for our next job. But, Art, you said we were through. You yourself said we should quit while we're ahead of the game. we got enough. Why take unnecessary chances? There's no chance in this. It's a sure thing. Showed you that item in the paper about that Rogers dame. She lets her jewels lay around like they were cigarette butts. 
She just bought over a hundred thousand dollars worth yesterday. Oh, we have enough in that closet. All we need. In two Mark. weeks, we'll start cashing in. Art, will you listen to me, please? I'm listening. Now, you know as well as I that the area is thick with federal agents. They're just waiting for us to make a move. They know everything about us except who we are. Glad they know so much. You're glad? It makes our job easier for us. It makes it possible for us to pull them out of the neighborhood. Now, sit down. Relax, will you? Hey, Art. You said you could pull the feds out of the neighborhood. How? Huh. How? The old one, two, that's how. One, two, one, two, one. Braden, control point to Harding Field Office. Action report. Three suspicious loiterers picked up this date and released after questioning. No other contacts to report. End, end, end. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Hardy. You're not interrupting a thing, Peters. Braden just radioed in his regular report. Still not a single contact. And there won't be any. What do you mean? T-Type just came in from Cleveland. Jewel robbery pulled there, definitely the same as those pulled here. Oh? No doubt about it. So our setup turns out to be a complete loss. Not a complete loss, Peters. Not a complete loss. Back to Counter Spy in just a moment. Valentine, it's light beer with flavor that will hold. Valentine is a wonderful beer Cause it tastes good when it's cold And Valentine is fine beer You can chill it all you will Valentine is a deep root brew With a flavor that chill can't kill You know, friends, no matter what the weather's like outside It's always winter in your refrigerator Where you chill your beer And that's why Valentine beer is deep brewed to hold its flavor even when you serve it ice cold. The fine, full flavor is brewed so deep in Valentine beer that chill can't kill it. Every cool, sparkling, refreshing glass just brims with flavor. Cause Valentine is fine beer, you can chill it all you will. Valentine is the deep brewed brew with the flavor that chill can't kill. P. Valentine and Sons, Newark, New Jersey. This apple pie is terrific, Sue. How about another piece, huh? That's it, a good big slab, huh? It's my girl. Here. Boy, I'm hungry. Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? What could be the matter? Well, you haven't said a word to me since I came home, Sue. What's there to say? Plenty. I told you why I went out of town, didn't I? I told you it looks like that man out there is going to buy the invention. Oh, yes, you told me. Still having any confidence in me, huh? At this stage of the game? Arthur, you're never going to grow up unless something drastic happens. Well, don't you worry. Something drastic is going to happen. Very short time, you'll see. Oh, Just Arthur. you wait and see. In a very short time, everything is going to be so different for us... That's Dan. I phoned him to come over. Wanted to tell him the good news in person. I'll be right back. Cut a piece of that pie for Dan, will you? Come on in, Danny boy. Sue home? In the kitchen. I saw by the papers that your Cleveland trip worked out all right. Didn't I tell you it would? The counter spies are now closing up Cleveland tied in a drum. Leaving our old neighborhood wide open. And we're walking in there tomorrow night to pull the Rogers job. Yeah, the way it turned out, you were right, Art. Sure. Come on in the kitchen. We'll celebrate with Sue over the coming sale of our invention. Let's go, Dan. Hey, you came out quicker than I expected. You have any trouble? No trouble at all. Just went as smooth as ice. Did you get everything? Uh-huh. All in this bag. 
That Rogers dame sure is careless with her jewels. Doesn't deserve to have them. You want me to hold on to the bag the same as the other times? Yeah. Bring it around to the house tomorrow night. We'll go to work on them. Oh, I'm glad it's over. This is our last job, Art. Definite? I told you yes, didn't I? Now relax, will you? There's nothing more to worry about. What could go wrong now? I've been waiting for you to come home. You said you were going to bed early. I couldn't sleep, Arthur. I don't think I'll ever be able to sleep again. What's wrong with you? You? Oh, you're not going to start that again, are you? Oh, this will be the last I time. I told you in a little while everything is going to be different. Yeah, and I told you there'd have to be something drastic to make you change. There will be. There already has been, but I never knew it until tonight. Knew what? What are you talking about? That closet down in the basement. What about it? I couldn't stand it any longer. I thought it would be the one way to bring you to your senses. I took the axe. What? I smashed that door and I was going to destroy whatever you had in there. I told you never Only it wasn't an invention. It was gold and diamonds. You're going to be sorry for doing that. I couldn't be any more sorry than I am now. You'd be surprised. I know what you are now. All the time I thought you were just a boy who never grew up. Oh, you're a man, all right. Lying and dishonest. Arthur Wilton, a common, ordinary criminal. My husband, a thief. You're the only one who knows that outside Dan. Don't be too sure. The police? Did you call them? No, I didn't call them. That's right, Will. Hey, you. We called your wife right after she had smashed in the closet. Credentials? Counter spies. That's right. We've been looking for you for a long time, Wilton. But I went to Cleveland. I thought you... That's exactly what we wanted you to think. Your friend Dan Hadley is waiting for you outside in a patrol car. All right, Peters, take him out. Right, Mr. Hardy. Let's go, Wilbur. I didn't know anything about it. Not a thing. Till tonight. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wilton. You're sorry. I don't think you realize what it means to be sorry. What it really means. In a moment, a word about next week's counter spy case. And now here's a mutual note for you. Say, when you feel sluggish and headachey because you need a laxative, chew Phenomint, the delicious chewing gum laxative. It's wonderfully different. Phenomint is different because you chew it, and different because it removes mostly waste, not good food. You see, Phenomint does not work in the stomach where food is being digested, does not take away a lot of the good food you need for energy. Doctors know that Phenomint works chiefly in the lower tract where it removes mostly waste, not good food. You feel fine, full of life and energy. So do as millions do. Get delicious Phenomint, F-E-E-N-A-M-I-N-T, for yourself, for your children. Say, what do you do when hamburgers give you acid indigestion? I chew chews and feel better fast. Chews, the chewing gum remedy? Right. Chews, C-H-O-O-Z, for almost instant relief of upset stomach, heartburn, other acid indigestion misery... Chew minty antacid chews. Ten cents. Next Sunday, December 27th, over most of these stations, Mutual will present a special broadcast of Counter Spy, immediately following the professional football championship between the Cleveland Browns and the Detroit Lions. So be sure to be listening next Sunday.